I watched two yesterday. But I got pieces of each because the stupid internet was tripping. Can I say that word stupid? My wife was in here. She'd be like, it's not a swear. So anyways, we get caught up in our kids. There are some people, there's one guy that I know. If you're watching and you know this is you, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be mean to you or nothing, but his kids are all playing different sports and every weekend they're traveling to do all the different sports for every kid and they've got uh, uh, you know Sunday sport I, that's the ones I do not they have no respect for the Lord they're gonna have sports games on Sunday even a school knows better to not have sports games on Sunday but they've got all these different sports and they travel and they got all these contests and, and, and competitions and tournaments and oh but, but, but they, they try to mask it oh but it's for my kids still they're still wrong if you're not going to church on a faithful basis because you're too busy with your kids, then you're too busy. You're using your kids as an excuse and try to tell that to God. Well, God, I'm sorry, but my kids were more important than you. Well, that's a sense of error because we love our kids. And I'm not telling you to love your kids. And I'm not saying don't let your, my, kid, my kid plays basketball. My daughter's on two basketball teams. But I don't, they, their games are on Saturdays. And if their games are on Sundays, I say, sweetheart, I know you like basketball. But no! That's it. No discussion. And if mom got something to say about it, I'll tell her too. Now, fortunately, that's not a problem in our house. Because mom knows. But that may not be in some other houses. Oh, well, that's not fair. Fair schmear. We're following the Bible. What is first? God's got to come first. I always teach in marriages that the husband and wife can't make each other first. Then how can the husband and wife make the children first before God? Then your children have become your idol. Because you're too... And, and what, what sense does it make? Come on, hear me. Be with me, please. What sense does it make to get your kids all in this stuff just so they'll stay away from drugs and be more involved in activities and be healthier when they're going to go straight to hell when they get older? Because you didn't teach them about God and you taught them that sports was more important than the God that you saw. Oh boy. Don't get caught up. We cannot get caught up in these things. We have to understand God has to come first. Hobbies. I love paintball. Paintball is awesome. I have a great time. I love it. I don't play it very often. Not lately. And even when I do. Uh, maybe one Sunday a year, and maybe every other year, will I play paintball on a Sunday, and it's almost like one of my vacation days. I'll take a vacation, um, because you know, I think the pastor should be allowed a vacation. I work 365 days a year, and then I work 10 months out of the year as a school counselor, or, or nine months, whatever it is. I work two full-time jobs, and you know, I say it's okay for the church to take a vacation. The Whites came up to me last summer, and they were going to Phoenix to see family, and we're going to be gone for about a week and a half, and we're going to miss church, and I'll say, oh, how dare you? You rebellious piece of little... I don't say that. Because it's okay to take a vacation. As a matter of fact, uh, whenever, if and when we ever start this Soul Patrol, part of the requirement to be on the Soul Patrol is that you only miss a certain amount of church per year. Because there are times, and it's okay. Now, I always suggest if you go to someplace else, you go to a church service where you're at. And it's fun because you get to find out new people, meet new people. And, and I know the Zenos do that. I know the Whites do that. They go to churches whenever, wherever they're at. They don't miss church. They're just not in this building. Understand. Very simple. It's okay to have hobbies. While we were doing announcements, Chris is looking at me like, hey, bro, announce this. When are we going fishing, bro? When are we going fishing? He's dying to go fishing. Hey, I'm dying to go fishing too, but I just can't do it right now. But we will. I, pro bro, I promise you, we're going fishing, okay? We tried to do a fall break, didn't work. We tried to do a spring break, didn't work. We tried to do a Christmas break, that really didn't work. But we're going to get it done. I promise. We're going fishing. It's okay to have hobbies. There's nothing wrong with that. They just can't come before God. We can't get caught up. Shh. Okay, kids, you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. We can't get caught up in this stuff. <clears throat> what about work? Oh boy, this is a big one. I'm, I'm going to be done. We're going to be doing this for a while. Holy cow. <laughs> Look at all that. All this is the Lord talking to you. We're going to end after this one though because I am done for today. And then we're going to do an altar call because I'm going to share with some, share with you something that you need to, to hear that should 
should motivate you somewhat. Kids, just bear with me. I just need about five minutes or maybe a little bit more. <clears throat> People get caught up in work. And can I preach openly or do I have to sugarcoat it? That's a silly question because you know I ain't going to sugarcoat it anyway. I'm just trying to be nice. I'm just trying to prepare you for what's coming. This may not make sense to you, but it doesn't matter if it makes sense to you or not. What matters is are you willing to follow the Lord? Okay? This is how it goes. It's okay to work. You need a job. The Bible says for many of us, especially men, you don't work, you don't eat. It's, we need and to live in this society. We need to be able to pay bills, to take care of our homes, feed our families, feed ourselves. It's not a problem to work. Now understand, in the Bible, they actually collected all their stuff together and they lived in, together in, in one group, like a little commune or something, and they put all their money together. Aren't you glad we don't have to do that? And I'm not saying we might not do that someday. We might, we might have, find ourselves in the way the world works and the way things come down the pike that we all come together and live in one place so we'll be better off than some people who are by themselves. Maybe we'll all live in the church. I don't know. Maybe if the world goes crazy, you know, and, and, and we have a bunch of starving people in the church, we'll all collect all our income. If it costs $15 for a, 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 a loaf of bread, then we'll all come together, pull our money, live in the church, and... and that might even be fun. Some of y'all are like, oh Lord, no, no. We need our privacy. We need our privacy. Uh, you know, uh, I bet you like to eat though. You don't want to see your kids starve. But it's okay to work, okay? But you don't want to put yourself in a position. This is, this is what I suggest to you. And we have uh, some new converts here. So I'm actually going to just break it down for you. It's good for you to hear. If you ever, once you came here, you probably had a job. And if you had a job already that took place that you had to work on Sundays, the first thing you want to do is go to your boss and say, Look, listen, I'm in a position where I've changed my life and I need to get out of work on Sundays. And I will be the, I will be the best employee, employee you've ever had to get that Sunday off because I need to be with the Lord. I also need Wednesdays off. That's where my house of God comes together in worship and I need to be faithful and I need to go in there. So I'm going to ask you, I will be the best employee you've ever had if you will give me those days. Okay? Now, what a lot of people do is they can't get those days off. So what happens is they, they come in and say, oh, well, I got to work. I can't be here. They didn't even try to get those days off. That's not the way, that's not the, that's not the spirit of a warrior trying to get into the battle. That's someone who's trying, oh, can I preach? That's someone who's trying to avoid the battlefield. What do they call somebody who don't want to fight? In the military, it's AWOL. What else would he call it? Huh? Deserter? Oosh. Those are strong words. What about the C word? Ooh, he even said yellow. Ow, ow. You say yellow belly chicken? Is that what you said? Oof. Ooh, today, you didn't know today was going to be deep. Now, I'm not trying to be mean to you. I'm trying to motivate you to say, that's not how I want God to see me. I don't want God to see me like that. I want to make sure he knows I'm doing everything I can to get into the battle. Because that's where I belong. What happened to David when he was out of the battle when he should have been in the battle? He got himself into some serious trouble. The Bible says that idle hands are the devil's. Did I say the Bible says? <laughs> I sure did. People say that idle hands are the devil's workshop. But we see that in David when instead of being on the rooftop, he should have been in battle. And actually, if I, if I remember correctly, there was a study that I was, I was hearing about and learning about. And I didn't study this myself, so I'm speaking a little bit of ignorance, but please forgive me. I think this does make sense. At that point, in that time in life, when David went on the roof, it was actually known that women took baths on the roof and they took baths at that time of night. So men were not supposed to even go on the roof during that time period because they might see these women. And so it was actually understood that you didn't even go on the roof during that time period. Around that time of night when there was normally bathing taking place on the roof. So if he was in battle where he was supposed to be, he wouldn't have been tempted to go to a place that he wasn't supposed to be.
so let me tell you what you do. You do that, and then if they say, you know, sorry, we're not willing to do that, then you don't say, well, fine, God come first, I quit. I mean, you can do that if you want to, but I'm not telling you to do that. What I'm telling you is, you start looking for another job. And if it's another employer that does the same thing, then you try to find another place that will give you those days off. And there's also some jobs you just can't apply for. I'll tell you right now, police officers, they're not going to give you, uh, correctional officers, I worked as correctional, they will not give you that time. Period. You work the schedule, we say. Um, you know, there's just some jobs, a manager, not management, but working at restaurants is another hard one. But you know, it's, if you're a really good employee, they want to keep their employees, they will actually sometimes keep you. So, if you will, but you know what, this is the part that comes in. If you will do everything in your power to get what God wants you to, to be obedient, which God wants you to do, do you think God's just going to step back and go, oh, they're trying, but I don't really care about them. God is going to step in and give you assistance because he sees you putting in the effort. He wants you in church. He wants you to be intimate with him. So he's going to help make a way. But many of us, he can't make a way in because we're not even trying. And I'm not just speaking about us. We're also on the internet, so I might be talking to somebody who's online. But that's, that's, where, that's the way the mentality of the warrior spirit should be in a Christian soul. Now, okay, if you don't have a job, you come to church and you're not working yet, but you're looking for a job, what you need to do is you tell the person that you're applying for on the application, I cannot work on Wednesday nights, and I will not work on Wednesday nights. I cannot work on Sunday afternoon. And I will not work on Sunday. I cannot do it. And if you put it on the application and they try to get you to do it, it's illegal. They can't even make you work on those days because you wrote it on your application. Now, uh, you, you, you tell the person what you're saying at that point is, that's how important God is to me. You've already testified to the people who you are applying for that God is too important in my life to put this money that I would get at this job before my God. Automatically, you've already become a testimony. Number two, this is just practical. A lot of people are looking for responsible people who could do a good job. And if they see you're committed to one thing, you'll probably be committed to something else. You'll probably be more committed at what you're doing in your life. And it actually becomes a testimony to who you are. You actually got some, some morals and you've got some, uh, you've got some important things in your life. You've got, I can't think of the word right now, but you've got principles and you've got things that you're dedicated to. So you, you demonstrate yourself as a dedicated person. And that's it. And if you start the job working and they say, okay, you have to work on that day, you say, no, I cannot. And if you pull my application, I can show you. As a matter of fact, I have a copy of it myself. I, whatever application you get, I get a copy, leave it home. And now understand, if they want to fire you, they can just fire you for something else. Because they can't fire you for not coming to work on a day that you told them you wouldn't work for spiritual purposes. They cannot do it. But they can fire you because they can say, you didn't do this right or that right. So you can still lose your job if they want to get rid of you. And then you're being persecuted. And they won't even care if they just don't care about God and they just care about making their money. That's fine. But, but God has to be number one in your life. I mean, it doesn't have to be, but you don't have to go to heaven either. That's just the way it is. That's the way the word is. That's the way God is. And that's my job to teach it to you. Last one. Relationships. Oh boy. You come to church and you're married. And you get repentant, baptized, get the Holy Ghost. And you go back to your husband and say, I just got saved. And I want you to come to church. And I want you to meet the pastor. He's this crazy, almost bald guy. Um, but he's a really loving guy. And he knows his word. He wants, to, he, was, he wants to meet you and teach you. And he wants you to come to our church too. And so he says, are you crazy? I didn't marry you into all this. I didn't marry you for this. I'm not into this. So what do you do? Okay. Get out. You kick him out? Do you kick him out? Some of these people are like, Oh, pastor, I get to kick him out. Hold up. Hold up. They're waiting. Yes, I get to kick him out. Is that what you do? Do you kick him out? You, 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 this is married or dating. Some of y'all are like, really pay attention now. Like, 
I'm like EF hopped up here now. Some people are like, do you kick him out? See, y'all youngsters don't know nothing about EF Hutton. You're like, huh? This is Veronica. She knows. She's laughing. You know what EF Hutton? You never heard that commercial that when they speak, everybody listens about finance? Nah. Remember? You're old too. You should know this. Do you kick them out? No. Why not? If you're married, that's not, you don't want, you don't just, you're married. You made a commitment to be with this person for better or for worse. So what do you do? You pray for them. Now, they tell you, now this is, the, this is the key. They tell you, I'm not going to church and neither are you. No, you don't kick them out yet, but you leave. You say, listen, um, my love, and you get a big old butcher knife out of the cover. My love, you give them this look. My love, I'm just kidding, I'm don't do that. <laughs> no, you tell them, point blank. Oh, I'm sorry, you misunderstand. I'm going to church. I don't care if I have to walk. I don't care if they have to come pick me up. I am going to church. What are you doing to your, your spouse at that point? You're showing them how important God is to you. How in the world are you going to win them if you can't even show them how important God is to you? It's not going to happen. It's got to be important to you, and you've got to live it no matter what they do. You, hey, you, I'm going to heaven. I've got to go to heaven. I've got to make heaven my home. If you don't, I can't do nothing about that. But I have to do it. No choice. Now, if he starts beating you or attacking you or locking you up, that's grounds for divorce. You can, you, no one has to be abused. No one has to live the life of a, being abused. Nobody. Um, if he goes out and, and replaces you and cheats on you or, or leaves you because he, I'm not going to be with no Jesus freak, then you're free to go. Now, what about if you're dating? You're dating. Now, you're not married. Oh, I, I could do this all night because then we can bring in kids. <laughs> <coughs> Who do we want to do first, with or without kids? We, we, we have plenty of time today because we, we, we're not going, we're running right on time. With or without kids? Yeah, that's the, the single without kids. She's like, without? Yeah, pastor. She's like, now I'm going to know what to do. He starts tripping. You are dating, no kids. And you have made a commitment to live for God. The other one says no. You, if you can, you have got a couple options. Number one, you're not married. So you can say Bye. If you want, hey, see ya, because I want to live for God. And if you don't live for God, I'm not married to you. You, then you can, that's fine. You are not married. You, you are free to end that relationship. Now, it's a little different now. Now, should you, do you have to leave them? No. Do you have to stop pretending like you're married in that relationship? Yes. This may sound crazy, but if you come to God, the Bible says there's just been no fornication which is premarital relations and premarital intimacy, you come to God, you get repentant, get baptized, get the Holy Ghost, and you repent, and you're not married, then you need to stop that behavior. And if they want to leave you for it, it's harder because you've already been involved in that behavior, and, the, and it's usually the male be like, hey, what's going on? But you, you just say no. Just say no. And if the person doesn't like it, that's okay. But you've made a commitment to live for God. Period. Now, the man, if, uh, you know, you have a choice of repent, get back, get the Holy Ghost, get married. Now, I would always suggest, I wouldn't ever suggest someone get married to someone who's unequally yoked because that's not Bible. Which means that the other person is in the same spiritual level as you are. Period. That's just, that's not my opinion. I'm not trying to be mean to anybody. That's just the way it is. Now, let's say you got kids. Oh, boy. Now it done got complicated. You're dating. You've got a child involved. That does not mean that you have to, you, you can't avoid the child. You have to be responsible. If you, two people made a child, you two are both responsible for that child. But that don't mean you have to be together. Even in, even in secular worlds, even in the idea of counseling, they'll tell you it's not a good idea to stay together for the kids. But you can. I wouldn't suggest anybody get married to somebody once again who's not equally yoked with them spiritually. But you still, both parties have to be responsible to that child or children. Families 101. 
understand. It's very simple. God's rules are God's rules. And I'm not giving you my opinion. I'm not giving you counseling or psychology. I'm giving you the word of God. Period. We got to be responsible people. If we have a child, you know, anybody can make a child, but it takes work to be a father. Anybody can make a child, but it takes work to be a father. So the most important thing is we don't put a relationship before God. If you do, what is the person that relationship becoming into your life? What do they become? They become an idol. And you are now in sin. Hear me close. Now you're in sin. That's why I always tell these people they get married. Never make that other person in your life before God. Never put them before God. I told that to my wife and she understands that and she said it to me. I can't put you first. And I told her I'll never put her first because I understand the dangers of doing so. It affects my relationship with God and now she becomes my mistress as well as my wife. That's crazy. The Lord gave me that revelation. She, the person that you, if, especially if you're married, only if you're married, your wife becomes your mistress because you cheat on God with your wife or vice versa with a husband. Last thing. Is everybody okay? You know what's crazy is, I'm, I'm just going to tell you how much fun I have. I had no intention to go down that road. I wasn't, in my, I just was basically put on the things that we get caught up in. And I let the Lord lead me in what I know about the flesh and the spirit and teach you about it. But you see down the road that we went? It's amazing what God will do to the church. He'll give you specific, direct instructions. We can never say, I didn't know. I didn't know. God, I didn't know. When we meet him and we have to face the judgment, we're not going to be able to say, God, I didn't know. He says, I gave you my word. I gave you a preacher. I gave you a teacher. I gave you the spirit. I gave you everything you need to do it right. So my, my answer to you now is do it right. Whatever you do, do it right. Do it according to the word of God. Last thing. Don't get caught up. We talked about good good caught up, being caught up, that's good. We did that in the beginning. We just went over all the stuff that's being caught up that's bad. But I have a personal a personal testimony and description of what it is to be caught up that not only can be dangerous but deadly. Yesterday I lost somebody that was very um a very wonderful, not actually, was, they, they were just a cool person. I, I wasn't super close with them, but I feel a loss as a result of their passing. There was a, a man who, we did a funeral in this church. This is how I met him, actually, I believe. There was, there was a couple other avenues that I met him, but we did a funeral in this church for his dad. His father passed away in uh, alcohol-related uh, death. And I was, I've been concerned for him ever since. Um, I've seen him. He's come to this church a couple times. He's been involved in a knife situation. Uh, I don't know if he went to jail or not. He may have taken off. And, uh, but I think he got stabbed or something like that. And he went through um, you know, just a lot of trials and tribulations. And, and I've worked with him a couple of times. And he's come to church. And I've tried to encourage him. You know, you need to come to church, man. You've got to come to church. And, and I've always worried about it. he was I met him at this funeral and and I met him through some other friends that have been here and and I just enjoy him as a person well he hung himself yesterday they found him dead in the front of his house I think it was in the very front part of his house and they found him there and he's he had a problem with alcohol before his dad died and when his dad passed away I believe he had trouble with it since then and I think he's always struggled with it but he's dead now and he's never coming back and I'm gonna miss him I really am I didn't spend that much time with him but the time I did I liked he actually reminded me a lot of me with that kind of fun outgoing kind of you know boldness in him but he was too caught up in that alcohol he just couldn't get away Mondo, that could have been you. Michelle, that could have been you. You know, that could have been so many of us in here who were caught up. I was caught up in the crack, not so much the alcohol. Sister Tiffany, that could have been you. 
if we didn't come into a contact with an apostolic God that has given us the life that we have, we could be hanging from a tree, dead as a doornail, and our life gone and affect all the people in our lives because we couldn't hold on to Jesus and we're caught up in this thing called life. Getting caught up can cost you not only your spiritual life, but your physical life. When I heard, when I heard it, I got a phone call, and his cousin called me weeping, and, and I've worked with her, and, and she's been here, her mom's been here, and, and, and we've all been pretty close, and, and she, you, you know, you get that phone call when someone's hysterically crying, you ever, you ever get that call, and oh, it's just like, oh, come on, okay, what happened? And when, when she told me, I'm like, no, no. No, it's just like, why couldn't he have stayed? Oh, just, we're getting ready to eat. And we're just getting ready to leave Albuquerque. And I'm just, you know, normally I was like, oh, that's too bad. You know, it's unfortunate. But this one hurt. This one was like, no, that didn't have to happen. That didn't have to happen. But it did because they were caught up. You need to make sure that we don't get caught up. Let's stand. I want you to understand, church, that this is a life and death matter. This is not just some joke. This is not a game. This, this world and this life in this world can literally take our lives. And we don't know when. My phone is off, so I don't know if she's here. You might want to go check. My phone's dead. You got to understand we don't know when someone else's alcohol and addiction will mess with us. You are not guaranteed tomorrow. I could I could start working on that. What a day! What a what a difference a day makes. If you're not where you need to be in God. And tomorrow was your day. What difference today would make if you repented? It would mean heaven or hell. That's the difference it would make. Joy and peace or misery and eternal damnation. And I'm not teaching the hellfire and brimstone message. Message. I'm just trying to get your minds in the right place. This is a life and death matter. And you don't know when you're going. So what you're waiting for, we got to repent today. We got to commit today. We got to know today, I'm going to live like it's the first day of the rest of my life. And that life may end tomorrow. I don't know. But I'm going to live for God. That's what I have to do. My wife will deal with the music in a minute, but I want you to come down. Anybody? And don't think coming down here means you're a terrible person or that you just messed up or you just drank alcohol. We don't know what. You coming down here simply means that I want to make my God number one today. I want to make sure I'm not caught up. So I'm going to release things I may be caught up in and make sure I replace what I'm caught up in away from the world and into God. I want you to get caught up in God. That's okay. That's preferable. That's what we want. But you don't want to get caught up in this world. You don't want to get caught up in the things of this life. You want to be caught up in Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Get caught up in God. Don't get caught up in this world, but get caught up in God. In Jesus' name. If you got to repent, that's all right. You're not that far from God. All you got to do is repent, especially if you've been baptized for the remission of your sins and you have the blood of Jesus Christ on your soul and on your life, then all you got to do is repent and whatever you've done goes away forever and the sea of forgetfulness. You're not far from God. When I Jesus. first heard of Jesus, His love and His grace, my heart was overwhelmed to think the king would take my place. I cried, Lord, I'll go with you every step of the way. That's all that I can do. My day. Him 
Him too. 